King of Yanistan, the Yaniverse, and the Yan Seas, Protector of the Pawns, Queen Regent of the Chess 24s, Breaker of Pawn Chains, and Father of Nonsense. This is Banter Blitz. You can challenge me to a Blitz chess game on chess24.com by hovering over my username, should be below the video, if you're on Chess24. My username is Jan. You click on Challenge Jan, and if you are a Chess24 Premium member, I might accept your challenge and we can play a lovely Blitz game and maybe talk about it nowadays, where we're all attached to our phones at all times. Talking about it, maybe not to each other, but from me to you, is something we shall be doing more often. If you're not yet a Chess24 Premium member, you can become one by using the bonus code Yanistan. You get 15% off and preferential treatment for a green card in Sad Kingdom. It's a very sad kingdom. All right, let's play. Let's play chess games. Let me bring up the chat game. Mm. Here it is. And do we have challenges? Oh, Yassine Equa Equanan? What's that? Is that French for a man has no name? I would guess so. Let's play d4. d4 is a good move. The pawn is already protected. But now I feel like gambling. I will put a pawn on an unprotected square. Well, he keeps his pawns on tightly controlled squares and intends to play the King's Indian. That's what we call it. It's a bad opening, but not without poison. Now most people play d6, even though sometimes when they start with castles, there are like some cunning guys that want to go c6 followed by d5. This is the so-called Gligorich system, named after a dude called Gligorich, which I've been playing on and off since the early 90s. I fell in love with it during the Kasparov Karpov match in the year 1990, showing my age here. And I haven't really stopped since all these defeats could not beat the Gligorich out of me. Castle's a bit of a sideline um, and it's not supposed to be great because of d5, I think. Objectively, um, what was it? Something else was better. Queen d2 or bishop f2. This is a position that I lost in great style to Vladimir Kramnik, who played the move a5 here. I have since looked at it and then forgotten what I looked at. But yeah, natural moves are knight to c6 or d takes e4. After which I also don't know how the game continues. But I think the computer likes a6 or a5 in these crazy days of ours. Pomposh is asking, are you doing the commentary for the Moscow Grand Prix? Yeah. No, in English I'll probably be doing... I won't be doing it in English. I'll be doing a few days in German. But not in English. In English, my next gig is Norway Chess with the great Peter Swidler starting... When does it start again? I think June 3rd is the Blitz and June 4th is the first round. First round. This line was supposed to be better for white. Can't recall why, as usual. Rook C2 looks natural. Something tells me Rook C1 was better. Once again, I can't really figure out why, but I will go with my vague recollection instead of common sense. I think after rook c2, there might be a problem down the stretch after, let's say, d takes e, queen d8, rook a d8, f4, um, rook to d3. There was some trick like that. I might misremember. Would not be the first time. Dodgic says, but Norway chess is years away. I know, I know. Can I go f4? That's the plan. I want to keep the position closed and then say, my bishops are doing a great job restricting your pawn majority. And your bishops are not doing as great a job restricting my queen side. King side. Queen side. 
my some side, my flip side majority. Here I want to go king f2, I'm a bit afraid to blunder into some rook d3 trick, but I think that's why I didn't put the rook here, so I shall hope it's all part of the master plan. Now I want to take, put my king on e3, block his pawn, and then slowly but surely queen one of my kingside pawns. Pawn push is asking, who your tip to win the Moscow Grand Prix on? I don't have the slightest clue. It's so random. I just saw pairings like Aronian plays Nepomnishi in the first round already. So some real heavyweight battles right off the bat. I have no idea. I'd like to see Grishuk do well. He's playing. Of course, our boy Peter Svidler is playing. Rooting for him. Girinho is in there. So it's going to be interesting for sure. But it's anybody's guess. Who wins? I don't know. I don't even know who the favorite is in Aronian against Nepomnishi. I like to say Aronian, but if he loses his first round match, so hard. So hard. Here I've reached all my goals, and my goals were fairly humble. That's always been my approach to goals. Set the bar low. Don't have big goals. Because then you might reach them. It's a very life-affirming way to live. Not sure about bishop c4. Looks a little silly because I'm blocking the c5 for my own rook. But I thought after a4 maybe I can go a3 and then either capture or go b4. And if he goes king g7, I have enough useful stuff to do. Rook to d1, rook to d6, then a3 will be a threat. So it's an unpleasant position to play for black. <clears throat> he doesn't fall for my for my deep trap of threatening rook b6, which is a great shame. Now I'll put my rook here and see what happens. See what happens. It's usually a big part of my game. Here comes the pawn. I could take it, or I could ignore it. Those are the choices I see. B A rook B two. Does that bother me? It bothers me slightly because I have to think about it. Um, could get sharp, no? Ugh, who wants that? This, on the other hand, I might not win. Which I also don't really want. Bishop A six now. Probably not winning this by a very big margin. It's also unfortunate. I think it comes down to the usual conclusion. I wish I was better at chess, but I'm not. So I have to live with myself and pay the price for it. Yeah, I've messed this up. Bigly. <clears throat> not better at all. Now his rooks are coming. That was sad. What to do? I'll allow him to checkmate me. That's more fun than not getting checkmated. <clears throat> oh, now you're going back. Then I'll try to checkmate you. If you don't want to checkmate me, I will see what I can do. Here comes the rook again. And now I want to give some checkies. Three checkies, to be precise. <clears throat> this should be checkmate somehow. But how? Maybe I should just get a queen. Hopefully this can lead, up, lead to a rook up situation. One of my strengths. Hi, Min Toon is asking, Jan, have you seen True Detective Season 3? Yup. I have seen that. I'm wondering if there's a follow-up. Or if it was just confirming whether I'd seen it or not. I thought it was alright, but no more than alright. And 
Yasin Equanon resigns because of the rook up situation looming. <clears throat> Let's play somebody else. Is there anybody out there? This can only take hours. It probably will take hours. Hmm. What about this guy? Victopus? Victopus. Is that a play on word for Victor and Octopus? Or is your name Victor Pussister? It's unlikely, right? He plays the, what do they call this? The Queen's Gambit accepted. Very solid opening. I will bluff and sacrifice this pawn. Hope he doesn't take it. Because if he did, I would have been very sad. <clears throat> Now, can I go d5? I never know if d5 achieves anything in these positions or not. My guess is no. So I'll develop something and hope that d5 will become stronger as time goes by, like now maybe. Pompush is asking, is this all theory, Jan? I don't think so. But it looks promising, no? <clears throat> Knight takes... Especially after b5, this d5 gains a bit of strength normally, because now your knight on c6 is loose. So he can't, let's say, take a bishop d7, because c6 is just hanging. b takes c4, I take on f6, and then take his queen. So this looks dangerous for black, in my very humble opinion. What's happening in the Twitch chat? There is some blasphemy going on. MC Blutman is saying, Mr. Dodgy, bigger Pramod. I don't know. That's like saying... Hmm. Can't come up with anything, but it sounds wrong. And Mr. Dodge is saying, I am Pramod's humble protege. <clears throat> that sounds about right. Hashtag no disrespect to Mr. Dodge. It's only one Pramod. This position looks almost crushing. If only I could figure it out. I could just keep developing like bishop b3 or bishop d3 and rook c1 and rely on the horsey. Feels like there should be some tactics, but I can't really spot them yet. Knight e7, queen e7. Don't see a win. So I'll keep the tension for now. The pawn structure is symmetrical, but his pieces look so awkward that I have a feeling something good should happen to me. Hmm. Home pusher is asking, are you on Twitch these days, Jan? Yeah, Chess24 is. There's been a big, big decision that we must hang out with the cool kids and join the Twitches as well. He's asking, do you have a Twitch account of your own, Jan, to stream from? Well, we have the Chess24 and for the German stuff, the Chess24DE account. That's the ones I'm streaming on. I don't have the personal one. Hmm. <clears throat> Bishop there to that square. And now what? <clears throat> Something should drop. I just have to. 
play my cards right. Not literally, you Hearthstone nerds. No offense. Hmm. <clears throat> X Clan is saying we need to get Radio Jan set up on Twitch. Does he know how to operate a computer? I think he's more into terrestrial radio, so I'm not completely sure. And I just played Rookie 8, Queen D2 without thinking. I forgot what my plan was, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't Queen D2. So let's blame somebody for it. Should still be winning, but if I have to do thinking, I'll get very upset. Ugh, here we go again with thinking that has to be done. <coughs> Knight c7 looks like it wins an exchange. Is that the end of the story or my king is getting a bit weak now? Nah, who cares? Who cares about king safety? I just did this video series which will be published in a couple of weeks I guess with Josef Dorfman about his chess method and he said the mo that the most important factor in his method is king safety. And I was trying to keep a straight face, but I thought extra rooks should be the most important factor, then maybe extra pawns, then king safety somewhere down the list. So I didn't want to contradict him while well, he was showing his stuff. But king safety? Take the, take the guys! Hmm. That's my method. Take stuff. Hope you don't get mated while you're taking stuff. Hmm. Not getting mated just yet, am I? Maybe I can ask some polite question like, if I attack your rook, will you give it to me? Please? Maybe? Some polite question like that. I'm sure there were more violent means to win this game, but I like to be polite. Keep everybody happy. Rook a8, queen e8, knight f8, queen f7, king h8, queen g8. It looks unpleasant. Pompush is asking, what method this, Jan? The Dorfman method is like, he thought about it, like king safety and uh, material correlation, like some smart stuff about bishops versus knights and so on. My method is grab stuff. If you can't grab a rook, at least grab a couple pawns. Try not to get mated along the way. If the grabbing stuff doesn't quite work, then you can always flag them. That's more or less Jan's method to chess. So stay tuned. Hmm... It worked to perfection here. I grabbed stuff, didn't get mated, and if I was not going to convert this, I could still have flagged him. So boom, you see how powerful the method is when all its elements are working in harmony. Let's play more, more games of chess. Virtuoso? Is today like International V Day or something? I'm only playing guys whose usernames start with V. Victopus, Virtuoso. V like Vendetta. <clears throat> What's next? F5? Are you kidding me, Virtuoso? You call yourself literally Virtuoso and then you move your F-pawn on move number two? That should not be allowed or good. Because now you have a problem with king safety. Look at your king. I will chase it with my very particular set of skills and then I'll grab it by the horn. You already have to play moves like h6 to avoid imminent disaster and I will already ask some questions like would you mind if I give a little check here? Because I wouldn't mind and if you don't mind either maybe we can just agree. Don't weaken your king on move number two, boys and girls. Especially 
if you call virtuoso. See, there's some very real non-virtual problems for Mr. Virtuoso like getting any pieces out already. And if you guys remember my method, plan number one was grab a rook. But if that doesn't work, at least grab a pawn. If that doesn't work either, then at least make moves quickly, trying to flag the guy. So you see all the elements working here. I went after the rook, intending queen h5 followed by knight f7 check or knight g6 check. That didn't work, so now I'm going after the pawn. If that doesn't work, at least hopefully he will spend a minute on knight to c6. And then we are already setting us up for door 3. Flagging. He goes d6. Is that allowed? I will go back to plan number 2. Grabber of pawns. Hmm. I haven't really thought it through. As usual. After king f7, I don't yet see a win, but there should be some sort of win. If not, I'll be very sad. He doesn't go king f7. He should have gone king f7. Now, maybe. I will. Take some preemptive measures against the threat of king f7. Now he goes king d8. But if you guys remember my method, try to grab the rook. Can you grab it? Not gonna be able to do it. Then what do we do? That's right, we grab pawns. There you go. Knight takes f8 and boom! Here falls the pawn again. <clears throat> He took one of my pawns, like I have to refine the method maybe a little bit to protect myself against dropping my own pawns, which is not as much fun as grabbing his. But it should still be winning. He can go for some short-term material gains with queen... Ah, for it. <laughs> I was gonna say queen f1, then I remembered us. I still haven't played rook f1, but even if I had played rook f1, I would still be winning. Anyway. Hmm. <clears throat> Omid Mali is asking, Jan, any new opening clinic streams coming? Yeah, apologies, there's been such a long hiatus from the opening clinic. Just, yeah, the studio has been occupied almost non stopish so I put it on a long break, but I will finish season one. When is realistic? When will I finish it? Probably after I did the German commentary on the FIDE Grand Prix and before Norway Chess, so somewhere around the end of this month. And then after Norway Chess, we'll start a new season and I will drop more opening knowledge. I'm very sorry there was such a long break. I blame it on Thailand and Granky Chess and laziness and the FIDE Grand Prix. In that order. It's my method. As for the position, Virtuoso, after some thinking, went queen takes g2. I will give a, che a couple checks and hope that something crops. Still, remember. Our goal is to grab a rook, but if we can't do it, we must find other ways to win the game. Also important, rooks not dropped are almost as good as rooks grabbed. So here he was threatening to grab a rook and I kept my rook. I'm playing horribly after I was <laughs> completely winning after five moves, but that shall not make us doubt the method. Doubt the messenger. Hmm. Here maybe. Hmm. 
That is a check. Checks we don't care about, as long as I don't win rooks. Queen e6, now let's go back to our rules. One candidate move would be to take the pawn, queen e6, bishop e6, d e5. But first we look for rook up situations. Always remember that. So here we have a chance to get such a situation by bishop e7, followed by queen takes g8. And knowing that a rook up situation is the worst case scenario, Virtuoso resigns. And thanks for the game. Hmm. I'm getting some intel here. On the last 20 games, Jan has played 80% of players rated over 2300. Is that true? Is there an 80% discount on the Chess24 sub for us? That would be nice. And I'm not sure what you mean, but I generally don't discriminate by rating in the show. What I do discriminate by is people I haven't played before. So I'm not sure. I'm really trying not to have it too rating bias. Oh, yeah. Apologies if it has been lopsided recently. Small sample size though. 80 games, 20 games. I've literally played thousands. Stein. From the Netherlands. <clears throat> Mr. Dodgy. Ugh, he's saying 0% games against me. Do I get 100% discount? Let me do the math, Mr. Dodgy. My gut feeling says no. But I could be wrong. Hmm. Stein sounds Dutch indeed. But do you Stein? Part says this. Vogels my. We part F says to. But say this. I don't know, but it's a bit slecht. And now, look at D7. Yeah. Even kijken. We are always opletting that I can E5 can do. Mm, uh. Can nog steeds niet, hè? Oké. Okay. Op E3 of zo. En back to the common tongue. My Dutch is still excellent. I don't know what to do here. We'll just play random moves. A4, F4. How bad can it be? King H1. Knight B3, G4, stuff like that. Brittany Zamora appeared in Maricopa County Superior Court Wednesday. I can't read the rest. What happened there? Sounds like a good story. Pompush is asking Jan speak Dutch. I like to pretend I speak Dutch. I wouldn't really say I do, but I've picked up bits and pieces over the years. Is this a good move? Looks a bit stupid, but it might be threatening knight d5. And if a move looks a bit stupid, but might be threatening a cheapo, I'm, I'm game. Pompush is asking, is that from King King Lukian? Nah, Luke never taught me anything. But you know, I used to play for Apeldoorn in my early 20s. So I spent quite some time in the Netherlands. And yeah, I picked up bits and pieces. Speaking of picking up bits and pieces, I'd like to pick up some of his pieces. Can I grab some of your stuff? Not sure if this is good, frankly. D, E, F, E, Queen, E, 5, and I was hoping some Rook, F, 6, Queen, D, 7 would be in my favor, even though the emerging position looks fairly double-edged. If I'm being completely frank. Hmm. Hmm. 
because you can play some passive move like knight e8, but that looks like a passive move. So I believe critical is takes, takes, queen takes, then rook f6, I don't know, take somehow gf, queen d7, bishop c5, some business like that. This just looks slow. So I will once again channel my natural born attacker and blow the position open. The problem is it's not according to the method, I understand, because now I lost a pawn. So I'm grabbing a pawn and I can't say I'm very proud of that. But, you know, chess, blah, blah, concrete game, blah, blah, that kind of stuff. Rook somewhere. No, can you just go DE? I want him to just go DE. Um, I don't know what to do. That's what happens when I try to make one aggressive move. Wears off quickly. I'm also breaking all the other rules like make moves quickly, win on time, all that good stuff. It's all gone. All my best late plans. Out the window. After one little bishop to d8. Yeah, this did not go according to plan at all. Because now, ugh, I'm blundering everything? Come on, Jan. <laughs> Tilt. Apologies to the royal game of chess. This is not how it deserves to be treated. But still, now we can see one of these situations where you're pieced down, which is bad. But it's not as bad as being a rook down. That's why I prefer being a rook up, being a rook up, because with a piece up, you never know what could happen. And now we will see all the dangers of just grabbing a piece instead of a rook. So, in a way, this could be one of our most instructive games. Mm. I'm a bit tempted to convert this into a rook down situation, but no, I can't do that. It's pretty bad, actually. Who would have thought? It's just a piece, but it still feels bad for white. Really, really bad. And he's also playing faster than I am. So I can't say I like my chances too much here, not gonna lie. I'll speed up. Always great to offer a little queen exchange when you're a piece down. Because you know, sometimes you have to trade something in order to get something. Like here, I have to go along with changing queens in order to grab a pawn. Not a great trade, I will admit. But beggars can't be choosers. Unless they're offered a choice. Still don't particularly like my chances. Stiny boy, you're too strong. What have I done to deserve this? Okay, I blundered a bunch of stuff, that I will admit. But still, should that be reason for this punishment that I'm receiving in this game? Which for h6 does not even allow me Hmm. Anything. Now we're talking. Hmm. That was a close one, Steiny. You had me worried there for a while. Ah uh, yeah, as mentioned, it's dangerous if you don't grab a rook but just a piece. And I also want to apologize 
to all the viewers for this sequence. I played well till here. Maybe a five is okay, but I didn't really have a follow up. And here I managed to blunder something every single move, which is impressive. This gives a pawn and this gives a whole piece, which is not ideal. So yeah, good game Stein, not a great game, Jan. And I'll play against, what's, what's that, Dothraki? <clears throat> Dolgoruki? Fuchsrudel is wondering, why is it bad to exchange queens when you're pawn down, but good when you're piece down? Still bad, but at least I took a pawn. Mm. Pizza Racer is saying, your position is crap, Jan. Around where? When I was a piece down for nothing? Or after that? Before that? Give me more, give me more feedback, Pizza Racer, because I wasn't quite sure. Dogo Rookie is saying, Hab kein Brett. You can try to refresh, refresh the page. It's been acting up a bit recently. So refresh. I'll wait for you while you're refreshing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dodge is wondering, have you signed the petition to have Game of Thrones Season 8 remade entirely? I enjoyed it. I think... Character development and all this like talking, smart stuff, people in rooms. Who needs that? We have soap operas for that stuff. I want dragons burning stuff. All right, looks like Dolgoruki is not managing. Hit the refresh button, the enter button. Sorry, Dolgoruki. Can only talk about Game of Thrones for that long. Speaking of Dolgorukis, didn't all the Dothraki die? And now they're all back like riding around like nothing happened. I was very confused. Okay, sorry. Not gonna be able to do it, Dolgoruki. If you challenge again, we can get this another go around. In the meantime, I will play against Mr. Europa Meister. First name Europa, second name Meister. He plays e4. I play e5. I will go here. Hmm. I think the Petrov. It's a beautiful opening, especially when you're playing for a win. Because it looks deceptively boring. But then all of a sudden, the action can heat up. I will play old school knights of six, bishop e seven. These cool young kids nowadays. They all play like bishop f5 and knight d6 or bishop d6. I don't roll like that. Hmm. Hmm. Don Quixote is saying, I'm looking forward to the end of Game of Thrones. Z Unfortunately, ending the series turns out to be a mercy killing. I don't know, I still really enjoy it and I look forward to every episode. I've read all the complaining, but I think it's sort of logical where they're taking it. How do we play this again? You and I before, right? Just, yeah, maybe. Should have given it a little more time, no? Like, mm. the heel turn. We don't have to do it all in half an hour. But I guess... Benioff and Weiss? I don't know anything, I just read some stuff, of course, but... Is this theory, by the way? It feels a bit weird. Um, I guess they said, okay, enough of this Thrones nonsense. Let's get to the Star Wars. I don't know. I enjoy the show and I enjoy all the think pieces that are saying, ugh, they didn't do that character justice so we should enjoy while it lasts it's the last shared experience humanity will ever have because after this it's over the monoculture has come to an end then three people will talk about how good russian doll on netflix is 
the other three will say the patriot on amazon amazing stuff then there's gonna be another three will be saying handmaid's tale season three six stuff but not everybody will be watching it and complaining so times are changing this should be six i think this was my novelty in the year 1972 when everybody was playing bishop f5 but i said let's put the bishop here that's the story and i stand by it cd5 should be critical i think it should go knight e4 d knight e5 or something like that because now i will argue the bishop is good on e6 look at it looks happy Queen C2, can I go here? I'll try. Hmm. C4, I can jump to B4. Rook D1 looks like a sensible move, I'll admit. Where should my queen go? Down in Santo Domingo. Queen A5 looked tempting, but I don't really see what I achieve after Bishop D2, so I'll be humble. Play queen c7. Hmm. All right, don't checkmate me, sir. That's not what I signed up for. And I get a bunch of questions I've mentioned already about the Fide Grand Prix. I'll be doing commentary in German, the, the lovely language of German, a few days next week. And then I think for the final in English, I won't be doing any, any commentary in English. Yeah, my next gig is the Norway Chess with Peter Svidler in June. Hmm. CD4 is asking for a bit because I'm activating his knight. But if we remember rule number one. Okay, CD is a, is a blunder. You should just go knight d4. Anyway, what I want to say is if we remember rule number one. Rule number one is try to grab a rook. And CD4 gave me a 47% chance to at least grab like an exchange. Which is a good start for grabbing a rook. Because then you can always grab a bishop later and have a full rook. So I thought CD4, for practical reasons, had to be played. Objectively, it might have been bad. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> A4. White Reigns is saying Gustav Jansson would be a better name. Yeah, so hard to choose your last name these days, unless you're like Icelandic. <clears throat> Even they technically probably don't choose it. Signar9 keeps saying, Jan, can we play a game? Very simple. You can become a Chess24 pre member, challenge me on Chess24, then you will appear on my list of challenges. And as mentioned before, I do usually give preferential treatment. So guys I've never played before. But it's hard to play everybody, because I'm assuming everybody that challenges wants to play me. Could be wrong. Um, in the same show, but one of these days we would surely play a game. I still haven't reached a rook up situation. I'm winning. So I've established two of the things I'm looking for, like almost a rook up and being way ahead on, on the clock, but he's taking good care of his bishops 
so I haven't been able to grab one. But boom, there comes the bishop that I've been angling for. It's been skewered like Viserion. Was that the guy's name? Rogol? Hmm. <clears throat> Nox510 says, just thought about it. You're German. So is your last name permanent or will your children have some kind of Jansson as last name? So you didn't think about it that hard, did you? No, my name is Gustafsson. My mom's name was Gustafsson. My grandfather's name was Gustafsson. My daughter's name is Gustafsson. It's just a name. It's like Smith. If Smith was Smithson. Um... No, in Iceland they change their names with every generation, their last names. In Sweden they don't, and in Germany. We don't either. Mm, I think. I don't really know stuff. I will play against Gast28. What a deceptive name. He says he's a guest, but he's really not. Sounds like a serial killer at a party. Hmm. What can I do here? The Borlin? Let's play the Borlin. This show is sleepy enough as it is. So it might need some Borlin injection. We have a new video series on the Borlin by Laurent Borlin Fresinet. Which I'm told is pretty good. I should pick up the Borland so I'm more flexible. I don't have to play the Marshal all the time. But I can also bother people. Castle I always thought 94 is a good move. And I got rid of this problem piece on C6. And now I can face the future with great confidence. I will go C6, D5 or D6. And as long as I don't have the stupid knight here. Really, why should white have anything at all? I don't think he does. D6 looks reasonable too, but if he allows me to occupy the center, why not occupy it? Rook e5 I always have, some bishop f2 or knight g4, so I don't think he can take this pawn. And if not, I just have all the squares. Knight f3 is the place to be. What are the options? Bishop g4, then maybe he can take on e5. Knight g4 looks interesting. Let's do that and then think. Should be three would be a concession. D4, I'm planning to go E4, and then something. That was about the thought process. Hmm. Grabbing some space. I guess 95, my Queen H4 I wanted, even though you could maybe, no, 92 is just a blunder, no, Queen H4. You're in real big trouble, Gus28. Because it's what in the business we call a double attack. F2 is hanging, H2 is hanging. And you're not going to be able to cover them both. So yeah, that escalated quickly. to finish this off that is what she said hmm should be some fairly trivial solution but so far I have not managed to figure out this trivial pursuit So slow. This has to win somehow, right? HG, I can go. Bishop G4, among other things. 
And I might be threatening some queen g3 or whatever. <clears throat> Maybe he can hang around a bit with knight f1. But how scared am I supposed to be of that? Hmm. Here, yeah, I thought queen h4 was probably winning, but this looked very clean. Point is if queen g4, queen e1, and knight f1, queen f1 is checkmate, and if not, he sort of has to give up the house immediately. Knight f3, f. And not much to talk about. I'm in tune saying I'm not strong enough to understand the nuances of the Berlin. Yeah, I sort of feel the same way. Then again, if you look at this position, unbiased, without all these years of staring at Spanish positions, like knight f6, developing knight and attacking the pawn on e4, looks sort of more natural than a6, attacking this bishop that just said, I might take on c6. So, all things being equal, knight f6 does feel like the most logical move. I don't disagree that I'm not a big scholar of Berlin endgame subtleties, but the move itself does look tremendously logical. That much we have to admit. It's as logical as Queen H4 check. And Gus28 resigns because mate was coming. Hmm. Let me play against Gutted Fish. It's a good name. Gutted Fish, are you there? He goes d4, and I will try to gut him right from the gut go. c5, d5, unfortunately, that's a good move. But I tried, and this will be the first and last time that I blunder a pawn on move three, breaking all my rules, I'm not going after a rook. Not going after a pawn. Stupid chess. B3, that's nice. Doesn't take my pawn. So maybe I can go after a rook now. I'll try. I warned you, rook on a1. Ah, that's a pity. Okay, we know the rules. If you can't go after the rook, go after the pawn. So I'll threaten bc4. Not a good move. What can you do? Gambit7 is asking, Hi Jan, will you be commentating the Grand Prix in Hamburg in November? I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it. I frankly don't even know who's organizing it or where it's going to take place. Of course, I'd be delighted to. It's, it's my city, you know. I was born in Hamburg. Um, so I feel if you're born somewhere, you should be entitled to commentate all the chess tournaments going on there. That's my position on the matter. But no, I don't think we've made plans for it yet, so I don't have a clue. Gutted Fish has been playing pretty well. Get, getting his pieces out, not allowing me to grab any pawns or pieces. So I might have to slow down terrace house style and I don't know make some sensible moves like uh, fight for the center or stuff not enjoying the process non Quixote is saying I think the general rule is that if English commentary is already available young comments in German if at all yeah not exactly but yeah some that line of thought is of course out there but as mentioned for Norway chess is also, let's face it, a strong factor is if Svidler is already available, who's obviously playing in this FIDE Grand Prix. For Norway chess, the Svidster is here. And I think we will get cameras from on site, so we thought that was a great opportunity to do our Chess24 show. And the deal with the Norway chess organizers in Stavanger is that 
we can do that as long as we make it a premium show. So the official show, which I think will also be great, featuring Judel Polgar and Anna Rudolph, is not too impeded by it. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to the Norway Chess. Let's face it, the next two weekends I'll be kind of busy, so it was tough to do. Um, uninterrupted commentary for the FIDE Grand Prix anyway, plus there are the usual uncertainties <clears throat> connected to the FIDE Grand Prix. So the plan is to do some stuff in German, I think there will be an official show in English, and we'll also do a show in Spanish, I believe the Spanish dudes, and then go all English on Norway chess. As for the position, I guess I'm slightly worse. Gutted Fish, very much holding his own so far. I have some trumps long term in form of the extra pawns in the center, but my king is a little weak. And he's playing an extremely sensible move. Once again, I might have made the mistake to judge the 1474 book by its cover, and sometimes it backfires. Hmm. I'll attack the pawn. Just to see if he wants to give it to me. Also, keeping the door open for b4, knight b3. Well, once again, the rooks, one of the rooks will be on fire. bc. dc is, of course, the positional way. But I'm so greedy. I don't know if that's correct. Probably not, because if I go like queen b8 to keep the fork in place, he also has knight d4. So now I think I have to go dc. <clears throat> when the game is still very much on, that's upsetting. And somewhat surprising. Gutted fish, so strong. <clears throat> what to do? There's always plan c. I failed to grab a pawn or a rook, so now I'm really down to, to flagging. I don't have any other tools in my very little box. It's a tiny wooden box of tools. Okay, this should be good for me somehow, I guess, because of the past pawn and all that stuff. Hmm. Hey! <clears throat> Don't come after my rook. That's not funny. Not funny at all. Run, Ponzi's. Of course, the goal of running with these Ponzi's is not to get a new queen, but to grab his rook. Get my rook out of the way. Although, I don't have to yet. Maybe I can set a cunning trap by playing b3. He can give me his rook, and I take it. Mr. Dodge is asking, did he say Ponzi? This whole operation is a Ponzi scheme. Normally I go for a different play on word with pawns or pawn, but might as well throw in the occasional Ponzi. Are those the lyrics? I want that rook. <clears throat> Give it to me, baby. And 
Gutted Fish resigns. After a tough fight, played very well for a very long time. So thanks for the game. Mr. Gutted Fish. Oh, let's play our boy Taryai. Taryai tweeting about Magnus Carlsen records normally, but it looks like he's taking some time off to honor the Bunter Blitz with his presence. <clears throat> oh, I can pin the horse. Ugh, do I have to debate theory? He's probably a student of the theories. Do I have some nonsense I can play? Maybe this is the most nonsensical I can think of. It's not exactly nonsense, but it's not very theoretical. I normally go d5 for castles. But, you know... Sometimes you gotta mix it to win the biscuit. Queen c7. Yeah. Bit of a may move. I just want to build a hedgehog and then win on time or take a rook. <clears throat> I guess you can make some argument for queen c7, like, I don't know, it stops something. But I don't like what I'm doing here. Of course, I am making him think. Which is always part of the equation, but objectively, I don't know, after queen 7 maybe bishop g5 was a move, so I'm not sure I trust this whole operation. e3 looks slow. If you go for these pushes, I think you should go knight b5 and try to make matters concrete, because now I can build a wall, and we all know, if you don't have an ice dragon, that wall will be impenetrable. Even though sometimes knight e4 wins material in these positions, I don't think he does here, like h6. Well, if we all ma both make like standard boring moves, then often the side playing the hedgehog has the somewhat easier game, because you know, you can target c4 for white, it's not so obvious what you should be doing. See? Asking some questions. Like, would you mind giving me that pawn? He says he doesn't mind. I can tell he kind of minds. But I'm gonna take it anyway. <clears throat> Still has knight b5, I guess, but then takes knight b5, queen d7, stuff like that. Hopefully, I will take stuff in the end. <clears> ha <throat> <laughs> ha, I lied. <clears throat> Boom! Surprise. At least I didn't slow roll. Mm -hmm. Queen d7 also looked good. And then rook c4, queen b5. Or queen c6, threatening checkmate. Sort of better. So, thanks for the game, Taria. Keep us posted on all things Norway chess. Or chess in general. Alright, what time is it? I can play one more game. Because I have... Is it babysitting if it's your own daughter? I don't think so. I have a daughter sitting. Not literally. Sickos. Duties. So I'll play one more game, and then I'll hustle home. Hustle home style. And sit there. Technically it's gonna be like lying there on the couch. So it's probably more daughter lying, but that sounds even worse. I tell her not to lie. Even though, of course, I do think that it's a sign of intelligence if she learns to lie early and convincingly. So it's a bit of a conflict of interest. Mr. Dodgy is saying, I think it's called pair renting. Or you rent a pair to take care of your daughter? It's too expensive, too cheap. I'll do it myself. Pair renting. And g3 again. Ugh, I do hate the Catalan so much. I'll play this line for a change. I did a video series about bishop e7 and seven bishop b4 check, which I think still more or less holds up. But you get so bored of these positions if you play them over and over again. So sometimes you gotta mix it up a little bit. Pawn Porsche is asking, how old your daughter now, Jan? I have no clue. You lose count over the years. But she can't be that old like she can. She can walk, she can talk a bit. She's still not going to any school. So it's like, I don't know. 
two till five, somewhere in that range. Guesses, a lot more. 95 can I take. We'll find out, I guess. Now where do I go? Here or D7? Now let's go to the middle. Hmm. Wow, Nashville Chess is bragging. He's saying two till five, lol. I usually know my kids' ages within a year or two. Okay. We don't all have the same approach parenting. Doesn't mean your approach is better or mine is better. But probably like this, in this day and age, this obsession with age and kids, kids' age, I think is very unhealthy. She can be whatever age she identifies at. That's my stance. Choose your own age. Pawn pusher is asking, you rate this line versus the Catalan? Yeah, I think it's fine. Like we should be four check. It's the other main line together with bishop e7 immediately. Both very playable. It's just, yeah. Question, if you play bishop e7, it's more like trying to force the issue because then later on we take on c4 and we try to more or less equalize directly. Well, bishop b4 check, Typically, you get some maneuvering game where you have to play some chess, which is not exactly my sweet spot. But sometimes if you want to keep some pieces on the board, play for a win, that kind of stuff. There is a lot to be said for bishop b4 check as well. All this b4 talk made me go b4. Hmm. Give me that. Of course, I haven't lost sight of the goal to take one of his rooks but it's gonna be hard to do here let's face it hmm. this looks like a good position for me i have an extra pawn we'll go rook fd8 rook ac8 and then slowly but surely try to creepily creep 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 the c pawn up the board Hmm. Pizza Racer saying, flag him, Jan. Trying, but we still have three minutes. Hmm. By the way, I think the best move is bishop e3. Looks disgusting. Now that I see bishop g5, I think the best move is bishop g5. Looks a lot less disgusting. Hmm. All right. I will, of course, play according to my method. And grab another pawn. I think I need one of my dudes to look after my king a little bit, so I'll put the bishop over here. I understand that impedes the advance of all these guys on the queen side, but since I have two extra pawns, I'm not exactly in a hurry. F4. Can I jump or will you take some of my stuff? He might take some of my stuff. Let me calculate just for giggles. Nah, it's too complicated. I see three might work, Rook D. Yeah, why not? Hmm. I was actually calculating Rook D8, Rook D8, Rook C3, and then some BC or something. But there's no particular need for fireworks. I can just go Rook D8, Queen D8. Then Queen D4 check is threatened. F4, I think, is a mistake. Because it also opens his own king and this long diagonal. Or pretty long. Not technically the long diagonal. But pretty long, nevertheless. I've had this discussion many times. Um, so, yeah, looks bad for white. What can I say? Mm. 
Bushido Hara is saying, yeah, my wife is German and translated your German audience. Sad. It's so weird hearing you not speaking English, lol. I don't know. Some people would argue it's weird hearing me speaking English and my very confusing cadence. German is my native tongue, you know. But yeah, I, I hear you if you're used to me speaking the common tongue. Must be confusing. Hmm. Still not over? This should be over. Let me give some more checks to convince him it's over. I know you guys can feel it. We're heading not towards checkmate, but towards a rook up situation. It will also be checkmate, but after king g1, rook d1, we should have won. I could also just take on e4 and be rook up. So Alex Super Trump resigns. And I will be on my way home to do to do that parenting thing Mr. Dodgy was talking about. So to sum up, I won't be doing, or I don't think there's a Chess24 show in English on the FIDE Grand Prix. I'll be doing a German show on the FIDE Grand Prix starting Tuesday next week. I believe there is an official English show and we'll also be doing a Spanish show probably also starting that day. Then, of course, the big one here at chess 24 is Norway Chess, where Peter Swidler will come all the way to Hamburg for starting whenever it is, July, June 4th or June 3rd, I think, for the Blitz. And we'll do a Chess24 premium only show. So if you were to get a monthly premium membership, let's say now, of course I recommend the annual. But if you were to get a monthly one, it would still take you all the way through our Norway Chess show, which I hope will be great. I will be doing my best to look smart while Spiddler is saying smart stuff about chess. Or to troll him to distract from the fact that I'm not that smart at chess. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm headed home. See you next time. Bye.